King Central now. When the Golden One Center officially opened its doors Thursday night, you could feel the excitement all around Sacramento. Unfortunately, the Kings lost to the Spurs that night, but it was a spirited effort, and you could tell this team is much improved from last year. Let's take you to the highlights. Timberwolves, Kings. Kings looking for their first win at the Golden One Center. Timberwolves had a lot of room to operate early. First quarter, Ricky Rubio, nobody around him, makes the J. Where's the D at, huh? Second quarter, Minnesota up 14. Rookie Chris Dunn, plenty of room. Nails the triple. Then a little later, what do you think happened? Yeah, Carl Anthony Towns, wide open. Money from downtown. Timberwolves went into the half up 11, shooting over 60%, but the tide turned after the break. Third quarter, DeMarcus Cousins driving. Watch out. He led the Kings with 29 points. Kings within seven. Later, Sacramento native. Matt Barnes, he's money from downtown. Kings within three. Minute later, Barnes buries another triple. Kings with their first lead since the beginning of the first quarter. Then, time expiring in the quarter, Rudy Gay throws it up, beats the buzzer. Yes, it counts. Kings outscore the Timberwolves 31 to 12 in the period. So we have a ball game, folks. It would come down to the final minute. Kings up four. Cousins with five fouls, tries to draw the charge against Chris Dunn, but it's called against him. So he fouls out. He's not happy, throws his mouth guard, and then runs up into the stands. All right, so Chris Dunn, Misses both free throws, but Minnesota with the ball back. Zach Levine misses the three, but Towns there for the putback. Kings lead down to two. Seven seconds left. Timberwolves with one last chance. Down two. Andrew Wiggins shot. No good putback. Also no good. Kings, they hang on to win 106-103 and pick up their first win in their new building. To the NFC Championship game, Eagles hosting the Vikings. There would be no miracle for Minnesota this Sunday. Second quarter, Eagles up 14-7. Nick Foles avoids pressure, airs it out, and hello, Alshon Jeffrey. 53-yard touchdown. Eagles take a two-score lead. Third quarter, it's now 24-7. Eagles flea flicker. Foles airs it out again, this time to former 49er Torrey Smith. 41-yard touchdown. This game was over quick. Foles finished with 352 yards and three touchdowns, 38 unanswered points for the Birds. 38 to seven was the final, setting up a rematch of the 2005 Super Bowl Pats and Eagles. To the ice now, Sharks and Ducks in Anaheim. Second period, Sharks up one. Timo Meyer back checks and Kevin LeBanc would cash in. Yes, the Sharks go on to win big six to the final. Oh, I'm so excited. Baseball is back. Hey guys, I'm Fallon Smith with this Hyundai Sportsnet Central update. It was opening day for Major League Baseball. Unfortunately for the Giants, they started their 2017 campaign similar to the way they ended it last year. Yes, with a blown save. Let's take it to the highlights. Giants in Arizona opening up a four-game set with the Diamondbacks. The story early on was Madison Bumgarner. Not from the mound only, but also at the plate. He was a beast, top five, boom garner. Hola, adios, blast a solo shot to left, put the Giants up two zip, and guess what, folks? He was not done. In the seventh, boom garner at the dish, and yes, folks, he goes deep again. Can you believe it? First pitcher in Major League Baseball history to hit two homers on opening day. It was Bumgarner's 16th career homer, most all-time by a Giants pitcher. G-Man up 4-3 after that. Bottom nine, Giants up 5-4. Free agent acquisition, Mark Melanson to close the game, but Bay Area native Daniel Descalso hits the two-out RBI single, ties the game at five, then later in the inning, uh-oh, Chris Owings. Flares one to right for the walk-off, and the Giants lose six to five. That's rough. Steve Kerr wasn't on the sideline for game four, but he was at the arena watching the game from the Warriors locker room. And although in pain, I'm sure he was all smiles witnessing his team beat the Blazers in dominating and entertaining fashion. Warriors, Blazers, Golden State looking to complete the four-game sweep. Kevin Durant back on the floor. In the first, Draymond Green, check this out, finds JaVale McGee for the vicious alley-oop jam. McGee finished with just four points, but was a monster in this series. He was plus 44 in this series, crazy. Then final seconds of the half, Steph Curry lets it fly. 
buries the triple and then check this out so he makes it falls down then on the ground a little shimmy like it curry led all scores with 37 points including seven threes warriors win 128 103. So if you don't know by now, on Friday, Wrigley Field hosted its first World Series game in 71 years. Do you even understand how long ago that was? Well, if not, let's put it into perspective, shall we? That's 25,951 days ago. Vince Scully was just 17 years old. Cubs superfan Bill Murray, he wasn't even born yet. So needless to say, it's been a long, long time. So let's take you to the highlights, shall we? Indians, Cubs, World Series, Game 3, Series tied at one game apiece, top seven, no score. You know this guy, Coco Chris. And he delivers singles to right. Michael Martinez scores from third. But check this out, Davis, he's thrown out at third. It's 1-0 Indians. Bottom nine now. Two outs, one on, Cody Allen facing Jason Hayward. So Hayward. He hits a routine grounder. Should end the game, right? Nope. Mike Napoli mm. bobbles it, so the Cubs still have a shot. So next batter, playoff hero, Javier Baez, has a chance to be a hero again, but no, goes down swinging to end the game. Indians win 1-0, taking a 2-1 series lead. Cleveland skipper, he's impressed by Coco. Sergio Garcia entered Sunday 0 for 73 in major championships. His drought, now over after a special day at Augusta. Let's show you. Sergio Garcia and Justin Rose tied at nine under entering the day. Now after Rose missed a birdie putt on 18, Sergio with the chance to win his first Masters. But are you kidding me? He misses it. He can't believe it, I can't believe it. We will go to a playoff. Rose's tee shot on the first hole. Woo! Oh my dear. Shot hits a tree, falls into the rough. So later on, on one, Rose putting for par, and um, yeah, that's a no-go. Misses wide left, sets up another chance for Sergio. He can win by two, putting it in, and you betcha, nails it on the first try, and he wins his first ever major at the Masters. Well done. Golf clap, and with a golf clap. Yeah, Henry, the dubs are rolling Saturday night. Even without their glue guy in the lineup, the Warriors stuck together and got past a young and talented Timberwolves team. Let's show you how it happened. Warriors, T-Wolves, dubs playing without Draymond Green and Ian Clark. Closing seconds of the first half, Kevin Durant shakes Ricky Rubio, buries the long triple at the buzzer. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Gives the Dubs an eight-point lead at the half. Durant pumped up. Third quarter, Steph Curry showing off his handles. Multiple crossovers. And then, finger rolls it in. Curry game high, 34 points. Warriors win 115-102. The Splash Brothers and Kevin Durant combined for 85 points. Now get this, KD dropped 28 and becomes the first player in franchise history to post 25 points, 10 rebounds, five assists, and five blocks in a game. Well, speaking of the A's, that transaction would affect the outcome of Saturday's game in Cleveland. Dylan Overton took the hill for Oakland. The lefty entered the game with a swollen 8.40 ERA in his three starts with the A's earlier this season. Although, in 17 games with AAA Nashville, his ERA was down to 3.21. But hey, this is the big leagues, folks. Let's take it to the highlights. A's and Indians. Oakland looking to bounce back after dropping the series opener. Top 1-2 on two out for Danny Valencia, and he delivers. Singles to center, Jake Smolinski scores from second, so A's strike first, one nothing. As we mentioned, Overton called up for the spot start, and well, he struggled. The long ball, a big factor in this game. Bottom one, Jason Kipnis. Oh dear, yeah, that one is gone. Solo shot to right. His 17th of the year, just like that. Game tied at one. Next inning, Jose Ramirez, hola. Adios, another solo bomb, this time to left center. Indians take the lead two to one. Top four, Billy Butler exchanges words with catcher Chris Jimenez. Same at bat, Butler angry, so he takes it out on the ball. Solo dinger to left. It's Oakland's seventh straight game with the homer. Butler's long ball ties the game at two, but uh, didn't last for long, guys. Next half inning, Abraham Amante takes Overton deep and into the stands. Cleveland 
Beck on top three to two. Overton would be done after allowing another run to score on an RBI double. He lasted just three and a third. So Liam Hendricks takes the hill, trying to limit the damage. But Mike Napoli, well, he had other plans. With two outs and a runner on, he crushes this to center. Two run Jack. The Indians score four in the inning, and they go on to win big six to three. So the Giants haven't gone off to the best start this season. They've played five games, and they've won just one time. But you know what game number six means, right? They're back to the top of their rotation, which should, should uh, mean good news. Giants, Padres, Madison, Bumgarner on the mound. That should be the good news, right? Bottom one with runners on the corners. Hunter Renfro ropes a double to the left field corner. Manuel Margo comes in to score. San Diego takes an early lead, and they would add on to it. Bottom two with a man on. Margo rips this down the left field line, and that would be an RBI double. And right now it's 2-0 Padres in the sixth. What's going on, Giants?